hate bulbous boughs. Ugh! It drives me mad to think of all the ship owners out there that think they are saving money and reducing fuel consumption, but in reality, they bought snake oil. To be clear, the technology of a bulbous bow does in fact work. It works quite well, but this initial success spawned a fad of adding bulbs to any ship that we could find, and many of those ships are completely inappropriate for bulbous bows. Bulbous bows are not miracle devices. Like any technology, they only work when applied correctly. We need to understand the limits of where to apply bulbous bows and the right way to install them. How does a bulbous bow work? The key is what happens when you put a small bulb in front of a large ship bow. Now, the ship bow generates large waves. These are bad. If we can reduce or cancel those waves, we can recover some of that power that we lost to those waves. Enter the small bulb. If you place a bulb in front of the main bow, that bulb also generates its own wave system. By careful engineering, we can arrange things so that the trough of the bulb's wave aligns with the crest of the main bow wave, and this partially cancels out the main bow wave and recovers some of our lost energy. Pretty neat! So that's the theory, but do bulbous bows work in reality? Yes! No. Well, only if you use them correctly. The key here is the two wave systems have to line up. Here's the catch. The wavelength of these two wave systems changes depending on the vessel speed. Those two waves only line up at one speed. A difference of only just two knots from your design speed is enough to make the bulb completely useless. The lesson here? Only install a bulb if your ship will spend the majority of its entire life at one specific speed. Keep this in mind when you consider future changes in fuel prices. If prices go up, slow steaming becomes attractive, but it's going to help you less because that bulb will now be working against you. Even with the limitations that I mentioned, there are many ships where a bulbous bow really will offer major fuel savings. That's a great thing, but only if you install the right bow. You cannot just slap a pipe on the front of your bow, weld a cap, and call it a success. Huzzah! No, not at all. On the left of the screen, you'll see a good custom-engineered bulb. Now, on the right is a simple piece of pipe slapped onto the stem. I seriously doubt that that pipe does anything to help the fuel consumption. So without careful engineering, chances are that the bulb will do more harm than good. The lesson here, you have to spend time and invest in the engineering if you're going to use a bulb. How to design the right bulbous bow? We've emphasized that's very important, getting the right design. Well, we start with some hand calculations. There's a 1978 paper by Mr. Kracht that is one of the most comprehensive instructions for this, and I will include the reference for that in the doobly-doo below. But this is just a preliminary estimate. With the advantages of modern computing technology, you really want a CFD analysis to really optimize that bulb and make sure that you have a good shape. Now, you might be tempted to reduce costs and reduce the CFD to a minimal scope. That's understandable, but your minimal sh scope should include at least the following two design cases. Number one is the base case. That is an unmodified hull without the bulbous bow. Number two, you add in the bulbous bow. Those two cases must be included in any CFD analysis because without that base case, the CFD may completely miss that your bulb did not actually help you, that the current design added 10% to the fuel consumption and you would be better off without a bulbous bow. It's important to check that possibility. Remember, not adding a bulb is always a viable option. Beware the storm. Bulbous bows are designed assuming calm water conditions, no waves and no storms. What? 
We all know the calm water rarely exists on the ocean. Thankfully, we've discovered that for most storm conditions, the bulb still works. Yes! Whew! Good thing. The one limitation for this is that with especially large waves or small vessels that will pitch around in normal sea states, in these cases, the bulb never really gets a chance to set up a steady wave system and help you. So, as a rule, fast ships that have low block coefficient, uh, those are bad for bulbous bows. They drop in performance very quickly, even with low wave steepness, your normal sea state. So they're not going to be a good candidate for a bulbous bow. On the other side, if you have a big ship, nice 300 meter long ship, or even 150 meters long, those are slow ships, they have a high block coefficient, those are really good. They're great candidates. Their bulbous bow is going to work all the way up until when you get breaking waves on the bow. So who gets a bulb? You want a bulb, you want a bulb, everybody wants a bulb. No, nobody wants a bulb unless it will help them. So who really is a good candidate? Large freighters that are operating on a fixed schedule. That's going to be things like container ships, uh, large bulk cargo carriers, or oil carriers, specifically ones that are on uh, fixed long-term contracts, so not necessarily spot market vessels. And also you're going to be looking at things like cruise ships. They're wonderful, they operate on a very fixed schedule. Anybody else? A bulbous bow may not be your first choice. Look instead for other options to reduce your fuel consumption. Maybe instead focus on your propeller. Just remember, bulbous bows are wonderful when they work, but they are very easy to get wrong. Bad bulbs or wrong applications do worse than nothing. So it's very important to understand the limits of a bulb so that it can work for you and not against you. Thanks very much. I am Nick the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Hey, did you know that there is a magic button down below? Click the like button or even the subscribe button and I will make more videos for you.